Okay folks, uh, thank you so very much for coming out here on this fine June day. Uh, the sun is shining, the skies are blue, and the, the lights are green. Uh, I'm, I'm President uh, Andy Knight of the Mount Rushmore Society, and it's my pleasure to be part of these festivities today. Exactly 40 years ago, since the original dedication of this highway as the Gutson Borgham uh, Memorial Highway. And I know that uh, you will agree that it's a pleasure to once again recognize those whose foresight and dedication brought about the creation of the incredible, uh, incredible American memorial that is behind me, as well as the road that leads to it. In 1973, this highway was dedicated to the artist and sculptor whose vision has become a reality and a beacon around the world as one of America's finest icons of freedom and democracy. And back then, the dignitaries who dedicated this highway in honor of sculptor Gutson Berkeley included one of my predecessors, Oatly Dean, I just talked a little louder. That's all right. One of my predecessors, Odley Dean, Governor Richard Knipe, and the state legislators who sponsored the re resolution to name this road, Senator Kenneth Trask of Custer and Senator Bob Burns of Vivian. Can you all hear me? Okay. The man who worked on our mountain was car uh, carved it hand in hand with his father was his son, Lincoln Borglum. And today, we are joined by his son, Jim Borglum. Jim, raise your hand. All right. Right I especially want to thank one of our guiding lights, and uh, a man whose first-hand knowledge Thank you for coming. We thank the state of South Dakota, especially the Department of Transportation and their regional engineer, Todd Seaman, for their work in making it easy to make this rededication happen today. Todd is in fact. So why are we having this event today? Well, often with progress comes a few cracks in the pavement, so to speak, literally. And when it came time to improve the original road several years ago, the original bronze plaque that was located just down the road was removed, stored, and then forgotten as the new highway took shape. These things happen, as we all know, but the discovery of the plaque has allowed us to once again honor those who shaped the mountain and thank those who built the road to it in the first place. While some states seem to be mired in bureaucratic red tape, I have come to know that South Dakota most often tends to run like a finely tuned Swiss watch, efficiently and accurately. The South Dakota Department of Transportation deserves credit and thanks for building the original road to this mountain and its redesign in the recent past. And of course, the original route is no longer what you travel on to visit the mountain today. And this today may seem like only a curved stretch of road to some, but to nearly three million visitors a year, this beautiful wide highway is designed to give you glimpses of that wonderful mountain carving and then a full view as you round this corner of its awe-inspiring view. So to all those engineers 
unsung engineers, designers, and road builders who have worked without public credit to make this road a true work of art. Our hats go off to you. Few of us are as, as talented or fortunate to make such an impact on the world as Guts and Borgman. For Mount Rushmore is indeed one of the wonders of the world. From South Dakota visionaries such as then superintendent of the South Dakota State Historical Society, Joan Robinson and Peter Norvell, to the artists Gutson and Lincoln Borgman and their crew of 400 who made that vision a reality Many, many people have contributed to this worldwide attraction and millions have traveled here to take in its message of freedom and democracy. Unlike the Statue of Liberty, which is in the harbor of New York City, this mountain carving was shipped in a boat from another country, the Statue of Liberty. Here in South Dakota, this memorial was hand handmade and homemade here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. As Gutson Borglum once said, and I quote, the purpose of the memorial is to communicate the founding, expansion, preservation, and unification of the United States with colossal statues of Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, and Theodore Roosevelt. As I say now on behalf of all of us, the purpose of this highway rededication is to communicate the recognition of the, of the artist and the sculptor who brought this memorial to life. May he and his family never, never be forgotten. Thank you. At this time, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce my friend, the superintendent of Rushmore National Memorial, Cheryl. Thank you. Why don't everybody move up, because the, the rental uh, PA is not going to work. So if you want to hear, you got to move up a little closer. Good Sorry. morning, everyone. It is such a pleasure and an honor to be here today at the rededication of the gutson Borglum Memorial Highway. And as Andy Knight said, hats off. I'm hoping my hat really doesn't come off in the wind. I tried to plan the day as perfectly as we, we could. And I'm so honored to have Jim Borglum here as well as Nick Clifford um, as we rededicate this Memorial Highway. And I also want to thank the Mount Rushmore Society, certainly the state of South Dakota, and all of the people who care so much about Mount Rushmore National Memorial and also the route to get here. Without this, we wouldn't be able to, to enjoy, nor would our three million visitors be able to enjoy this iconic um, sculpture. So again, I wanna thank all of you for being here. I imagine that 40 years ago today, the superintendent at the time, Harvey Wickware, was just as honored as I was and I am today. So thank you very much. I'd like to invite a friend of mine and, a, and, a, and one of the last of the original carvers on the mountain, Nick Clifford. Nick, can you come on up here and say a few words? Whoa, okay. I'll try to get up there. It's, a, it's, a, it's so nice to have all of you here in this cold day to, to rededicate the Gutzenbogelum uh, uh, Memorial Highway. And uh, it's, uh, it's really kind of uh, funny the way all of this came about. My wife Carolyn, uh, of course, she she really she really likes to read lots of books, and about the carving of Mount Rushmore, she likes to read Lincoln's book, like you know, a lot of good books. 
and she was really one year uh, this uh, winter sometime and it's one of Lincoln's books that he'd written it's out of print now but she was really good and Lincoln mentioned in the book that uh, something about they had a, uh, a dedication of uh, the Guts and Borglum Memorial Highway uh, at the time Carolyn and I well, we were down in Houston so we weren't here when they dedicated it back in uh, so it was kind of a surprise to us. So Carolyn was kind of inquisitive uh, about it. So what she did, uh, she uh, she called uh, some of the state officers in here, Department of uh, Transportation, and asked them about the uh, uh, the dedication and, uh, of the of Guts and Morgan Memorial Road. They uh, said they would check into it, and uh, if they could find out anything, they would let us uh, uh, get back to it. Well, uh, it went on for a while, and of course, uh, they eventually uh, got a hold of uh, some people in the Rushmore Memorial Society, and they got a hold of uh, Diana. And Diana, of course, uh, uh, she uh, right away, uh, the man told her that all he had to do, all she had to do was uh, pay $600 and uh, uh, and then we'd, we'd have the right to, because it was already had been dedicated, and we had the right to uh, redo the uh, uh, naming of uh, the, the highway here. So Diana got right busy through, through the uh, Memorial Society and paid him the $600. And of course, uh, uh, that was the only the beginning. And we we had the we had the right to uh, to uh, rededicate the, the road, but uh, uh, then Carolyn thought, well, maybe she could get some information from. Uh, uh, from uh, uh, Robin, she lived down in Corpus Christi. So she contacted Robin, and uh, Robin, of course, had taken a lot of pictures uh, from, that Lincoln had for the first dedication. So right away, she sent back uh, quite a few pictures of the first dedication of the memorial. Uh, so anyway, that uh, we had that, but. Uh, the next thing was the uh, plaque. Uh, we thought, well, my gosh, uh, they surely wouldn't have thrown that plaque away. The plaque must be here someplace. <laughs> so we asked around uh, several places in the park service, and no one seemed to know where it was at, but they would check on it and see if they could find it. Well, Bob... Uh, uh, we, uh, he came to our rescue, Bob, uh, uh, over there, and uh, he, uh, Dominic. so, what? Dominic. Bob Dominic, he went to work, and uh, he started looking around and uh, see if he could find the plaque. Well, somebody told him it was here, and no, oh, they moved it another place because it was in their way, and so he went down there and looked for it there, it wasn't there, and finally he found the plaque. <laughs> So then we had the plaque. So, of course, then uh, the, all of the paperwork and everything else went, came from the Rushmore Memorial Society. And Diana was the head of all that. We have to give Diana a great big thank you because she is the one that put all of this together and it made it possible so that we can be here today. So that's it. So that's about the, the only part that uh, uh, I guess that uh, Carolyn and I had to do with it. We had the idea and somebody else uh, got a hold of it and, uh, and uh, we have the, uh, uh, re the rededication Guts and Borgum's Memorial Highway. And we hope now that it will be here for a good long, long, long while. And uh, 
I, uh, I don't know, but I have to say, uh, uh, probably uh, uh, Jim uh, Borglum is here with his wife Pam, and probably Jim is the only one that's been at both dedications. I don't know. Have you, Jim? <laughs> I think Jim is the only one that's been at both dedications. And of course, that was 40 years ago, so. Uh, we're certainly happy to have Jim and his wife here today. And Lincoln would be very happy to have it rededicated. And, and Lincoln, of course, uh, uh, Lincoln, he was responsible for me getting a job at Mount Rushmore. And uh, he always kind of took me under his wing. I don't know if he felt sorry for me, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, uh, he, uh, he gave me the job, and I was very happy to have a job back in those days. So. I, uh, Lincoln was a wonderful guy, and his father, Gutson, was a very, very famous man, a very famous sculpture, and that's what I tell thousands of people every year about Mr. Borgham. And it's hard to know not much more when I talk to him at, in, in the gift shop. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to lose my cane. Right here. Oh, right here. <laughs> I don't want to lose that. I, I'd be out of luck. <laughs> Thank you a lot. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker that uh, I'd like to invite to say a few words is Todd Seaman, who's from the South Dakota Department of Transportation. And uh, he's the gentleman who is responsible for this rededication of the highway. Todd? And I will be very, very brief, but I appreciate everybody coming. And I don't know the exact history and the exact route of Highway 244, but I believe that it was the route that Gutsman used to take from Eastland up to Mount Rushmore. So Department of Transportation, we're very grateful to be part of this today and pay a little bit of part with the signing and the traffic control for, for the event today. So we're very grateful to be a little bit of piece of this, but mostly it's about Gutsman Borglum and not so much about the highway. So thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. privilege to introduce to you Jim Borglum, the grandson of Gutson Borglum. Jim would like to say a few words. I just want to say thank you all for coming. Uh, I was here for the other dedication. Uh, I came here with my father and my stepmother and it was a lovely day like this. <laughs> and uh, we didn't know it was going to be this nice, so thank you for making the trip. Uh, this is nice to get this done again and everybody recognizes it and a very proud moment for our family. Thank you very much. This concludes uh, this portion, part of the program. Uh, we'd like to have all of you come up and do an official unveiling, but we'd like Nick and, and Jim and Carolyn and Pam uh, to come up over here. Over here, over here, side here. Gary, why don't you direct? Okay. Uh, who's gonna unclip that clip on the on the left? We get we get Nick up there and uh, Carolyn. Why don't you get right up over here and do the unclipping along with Jim? Oh, I don't think Nick doesn't have to go across that side. We can oh, no. get we can get it all right here. And uh, who's all? Everybody ready with their cameras? We got media here. Um, yeah, you got your right shot, sir. He's good. Um, I'll give you a countdown. And I gotta get a shot. Hold on one second. Good, good thing there's always a delay. Okay. Um, and Mrs. Clipper, you're all, oh, you're fine. Okay. Candy, will you come in this gap just a little bit? Okay. All right, on the count, I'll do three, two, one, and then unveil. But I gotta get up where this Okay. Three, two, one, unveil. Uh, 
this is clipper. You can step back just a little bit. Nick's fine. Okay. Everybody got the last shot here and three to one smile. Everybody got your shots? 